And the prayer it is, God said a lot to every one of you this morning. You will never fail to get resources, to get the help, to get the support that we advance your course in life. I saw and I was touched. Everyone consigned. And I was told they are going to bring another machine. Praise God. Do you hear that? That is the type of thing that David did. He just loved the house of God. He thought of it. He in First Chronicles seven or oh, First Samuel seven, he saw the house. Oh, how can God's house be in a tent? Then he said, "I will build the Lord the house." And the Bible says he had not finished thinking about it. God sent Prophet Nathan to him. Say that thing you are thinking in your heart. Let alone you, who is not just thinking about it. But you already did it. In the name of Jesus, decree this morning that the help and support you need in life to advance your cause, you will never miss it. Somebody did not get me well. That the help and support that you need in life to advance your cause, you will never miss it in life. The help and the support you need in life to advance your cause, you will never miss it. From this service this morning, for all effort everyone put in, the choir has to stress their praise. Everyone running head as scatter to get this meeting fixed. Because there are people waiting. At least six countries are connected right now to listening. And everything seems to have gone down. In the name of Jesus, I pray today they support, they support, and they help you need all the days of your life to advance your cause. You will never lack it. So say to David, he will never lack a son that will sit on the throne of Judah. And that is why in spite of all everything he did, God restore the kingdom to him. Praise the Lord. And this morning, before I came to serve this morning, the Lord prays for my heart that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatsoever, whatsoever, not only whomsoever, whatsoever, whatever is connected to you will not fail. Whatever is connected to you will not fail. Whatever is connected to you will not fail. You will not fail in life. Your business will not fail. Your career will not fail. Your family will not fail. Your investment will not fail. Whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And the Bible says, This is the victory. And say, whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. Can you see the connection? Whosoever believe, first John 5. Read it to 1 to 4. What? Say, whosoever that believe that Jesus is the Son of God overcome the world. This is whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Do you see that? And the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. So, because you believe that Jesus is Christ, that he, Jesus is Lord, because you believe that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Savior, that is why we are all gathered here this morning to worship and celebrate him. 
and whatsoever is born of him overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have overcome death. You have overcome sickness. You have overcome failure. You have overcome disappointment. You have overcome every limitation that is set against you by the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, whosoever believes that Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord, is born of God. And want you to have this mentality that I am born of God. I am born of God. So I overcome the challenges that is in the world. I pray this morning that your eyes of understanding be open to discover where God has placed you. Every chaos, every trouble, every poverty, every setback, every failure that is in this world, you have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome because you are born of God. In Jesus' precious name. Put your hands together and celebrate God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please graciously take your seat. Hallelujah. Please take your seat and be set to don't let the machine dis distract one of you. Praise God. I will speak this morning. Today is the last Sunday of the month of July. God has been so faithful. Seven months gone. And we are here in a thanksgiving to celebrate him. Praise God. We cannot count the number of people that we know that are no longer there. But he has preserved us. He has kept us by his grace. He has kept us by his love. He has kept us by his mercies. But beside that, you are redeemed to a life of greatness. There's something I want you to enter our mind. There's something I want to register with us that you are redeemed to have a good life. Praise God. I have come to give you life and give it in surplus. He's not a thief. The thief comments not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you might have life. And what is life without comfort? When he says he wants you to have life, meaning quality life, enviable life, satisfactory life. And that you have it in surplus. Amen. Whatever is denying you of your redemption right, that power is cursed this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The topic of my message this morning is this. Redemption advantage. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 4 to 16, it's a very common scripture that we all know. Look, you are created to be large. Amen. Let somebody say, I'm created to be large. I am created to be large. I'm redeemed to be large. I'm redeemed to be great. Let me give you a simple illustration. Your place in destiny is a large place. And let me tell you what God will not do and what God will do. Even as human beings, have you seen any agriculturist who carry a mango tree? You know, a mango tree or let's say oak tree. Oak tree is a giant tree. You carry a big, okay, I have a mango tree standing there. It's still a small one. It's still a small one. But it's big. Have you ever seen an agriculturist carrying a mango tree and plant it in a flower pot? Do you look at what I'm saying? Mango tree, you have a dream that I'm planting this mango. In three, four years, I 
I want it to grow, to produce fruit for me. And then you planted, you planted it or plant it in a flower pot. Is there anybody that does that? Is there wisdom in it? Because mango has great roots, long, deep, and spread around. It will break the flower pot and it will die. Praise God. If God will not do that, if a man will not do that, God will not plant your life in a narrow place, in a hallowing place. That's why he said he located Jacob in a hallowing place. A place that life is very tight. A place that life is very stressful. stressful. He located him. He did not, God will not plant you in a narrow place because he has created you to be large. In the demonstration, Jesus was still teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16. There are scriptures that we know very well from Sunday school. You are the light of the world. Are you getting right? I would like you to take that. You are the light of the world. Amen. Is there anywhere you are in this world that you not notice the sun? Is there anywhere you are that you not notice the moon? Is there anywhere you are that you not notice the star? You see Jesus say, oh, you are following me. I've made you so significant. There's no, you have not created you to be hidden. I've not created you to suffer obscurity. You are the light of the world. You'll be noticed. Whether in the wilderness, whether in America, whether in Europe, in Nigeria, in Asia, wherever you find yourself, I've made you the light of the world. So that you can be significant. Light is a sign of significance. He had not ended. He said, a city that is set on a hill. Jesus described you as a city. Praise God. In geography, settlements are classified. They say rural area, hamlets, village, towns, and cities. Are you getting me right? According to size, Jesus did not say you have the value of a hamlet. Praise God. Jesus did not say you have the value of a town. Jesus did not say you have the value. He said you are a city. Meaning you are large. One description of a city is that it is large. It is big. It is deep. It is wide. It's full of all manner of resources. I want you to understand whom God say you are from the service today. And then expand your brain. And let your mind accept whom you are. Say you are a city. A city is known to be large. In those days, in the primary school, we talk about a city, we talk about Ibado. There's a poem about Ibado. Even in grammar, there are certain um, preposition that is used when you are talking between a city and a town. Praise God. I'm going to Lagos. I'm going to Ibadan. So there are certain words that can follow. When there is, you can say at. I live at a hamlet. I live at Agbeneba. I live at Iale. I live at Chika. But when you come to Lagos, you can't say I live at Lagos. You can't say I live at Ibadan. You can't say I live at Benin. They will mark you and call you wrong. Do you know why? Those places are cities. You can't address them anyhow. You must give them the status that you have taken. And Jesus say, you are a city. Is somebody hearing me this morning? You are a city. So you need to walk up yourself. You need to know your true identity. And there's something common with a city. In cities, you have opportunities. 
I pray your life is where people will find help, where people will find food, where people will find direction in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we are a city, that is why people will leave villages and run to city to find opportunity. A city is full of resources, all manner of resources. If you want a good life, they say go to the city. You will not lack good life. You will not lack good life. Not only for yourself, you will be a source of good life to others. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is the idea of Jesus Christ for the church. That is the idea of Jesus for the church. Praise God. And when you read, he keeps saying those significant things. You are also a light. You are a candle. That say nobody lighting a candle and put it under a bushel. Are you hearing that? Nobody will lighten a candle. Will put fire. So God is saying, "You are so significant to me. I cannot redeem you and put you under ground where nobody will see you." He refers you to his project. Say, you are my candle. I've lit at you. I, feel, I will not put you under. Are you getting it right? Neither do men lit a candle, light a candle, and put it under a bush. Where they will not see it. Oh my God. So if men will not do it, do you think God will save you and put you under in life? The blood of Jesus is, is so precious that he will waste. And that's what the Bible says, you are the apple of my eyes. I give you attention. I love you. I cherish you. I'll take care of you. No man light a candle and put it under a bush. So if a man will not do it, how do you think God will do that to you? That is what redemption means. Praise God. That is what redemption means. God saved you to make you a significant person. You need to know that. You need to, be, to believe that word. And stop undermining yourself. It's a matter of mental shift. To know I am a significant person. Why? How do I know? He will never put me, put me under where nobody will see me. He said, Jesus, God, who did not spare his only begotten son and gave him to us, how will he not, alongside with him, give us all things freely? Romans 8.32 How will he not what? Jesus, God who did not spare. Can you see that? God is not a waster. He has invested in you. He redeemed you by the blood of his son to make you significant. And unless you begin to believe that, believe God's word above your circumstances, you will remain irrelevant. People who don't believe God's word are both circumstances. You don't believe God's promises are both what you are saying, are both your feeling, and are both your pockets. They will never move forward in life. You need to believe God's word. And what his word say I am? His word say I'm the head, so I'm the head. He say I'm rich, I am rich. I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous. I'm successful, I'm successful. I'm righteous, then I'm the righteousness of God. Not by my work, but by the work of Jesus Christ, who perfected my righteousness on the cross at Calvary. I'm whom he said I am. I've seen myself as a large person, a great person, a river that people would drink from. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. He say, you say, in you, you have a river that will wear in you. He say, on the day 
on that last day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried. John chapter 7, 37. He stood up and cried. He said, let him that is thirsty, let him come and drink. And the Bible said he was speaking about the Holy Ghost that was about to be given. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Look at verse 38. And this was saying with reference to the Holy Ghost. Verse He that believeth on me, as the scriptures say, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, look, as I, as I have enough to give to everyone, whosoever believes in me will also have enough to give everyone. Is somebody getting he said, as I have enough, he stood and cried. Say, anyone that is thirsty, anyone that is hungry, come to me, drink to your full. And he said, he that believe on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly also shall flow rivers of the living water. You will have enough to give the Lord. I pray today you are not going to be at the mercy of the world, but the world will be at your mercy. When they say they don't have again, you say, I have enough, come and take. Say, he that believe on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of the living water. That's what redemption has done for you. Praise God. That is what redemption has done. Put you and making you relevant. Making you a significant person. Can you see that you are the one? Now that people say there's no food, you are the one. Say, oh, you say there's no food? Please, can you come? If I, you don't even come. Please send him a bag of rice. Send these people. A day among you here, I see someone who will come with a, a load, a truck, a cargo vehicle, and say, Sir, please, is there anyone in church that is hungry? When the service ends, please just go and pick whatever you need. Do you know why we are doing that? It will be so. Say the poor will always be among you. Why would they be among you? They they have not heard the word you are hearing. So and when they come like that and they begin to hear the word, the word begin to change their life. So they drop that status and all that have not heard. They will come and by that the kingdom of God is advanced. Among you here. I see someone who drive in and drop 100 bags of rice, drop 50 gallons of oil, and they'll be announcing if there's nobody hungry here, and for two weeks, there's nobody to pick one from the church because they all have. But until the poor here, and they come, you see what I'm saying? You will always have the poor in your midst. Do you know why? They are coming. To get something to take. It's not that you will be poor. Hey, get the scripture right. You know, people say, even Jesus say, there will be poor in your, your, your midst. It's not that you will be poor. The poor will come because the Lord has blessed you and you have become a place of resources that they can feed and drink from. And by that, they hear the gospel. And when they sit to hear the gospel, that story will change. Then there will be other poor who come. By that, the kingdom of God is advanced. The Bible says, through prosperity, my kingdom shall be spread abroad. That's why God wants you to be significant. He made you to be a significant person. But you need to know. And it's a function of faith. And faith come by hearing. Praise God. So what instruments do you use? How do you get to this place you need to be built? Praise God. Because every city is built. 
every city is built. So if you have made a city, you may demarcate for past 10 years. Let me give you an example. For past over 10 years, there's a place called Centenary City. It carries the name of a city, but it's not built. It's bush. So there are believers who are not living to the status that God has given to them because they refuse to build their life. It's called Centenary City, but there's no single human being there. Praise God. So that's why I say every city is what? Is built. The way to transmute yourself to a city status stem is by building your most holy faith. You must say, build up your most holy faith. Pray always in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So prayer is a factor. Uh, but I'm taking another thing that is another factor, which is the world. Acts 20, 32, 32, 20 say, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you. Now, anyone that despises the word will not be built. The word of God is what built you. That is able to build you. I command you to the I command you, I hand you over. I commend that you pay attention to the word of his divine ability that is able to build you. Are you getting me right? Any Christian that need, want to be built, to be strong, is a Christian, that is 32, 20, 20, 32, please, is a Christian that subjects himself to be built. Nothing makes you strong than understanding of the word. Than eating. Ezekiel that say, Oh, you gave me the word and I chew it. It's so sweet in my mouth, and the word put me upon my feet. The word put me upon my feet. So when the devil comes, I'm standing on my feet. When adversity comes, I'm on my feet. When sickness comes, I'm on my feet. If poverty comes, I'm on my feet. Do you know why? He said he has eaten the word, and the word put him on his feet. Nobody that is built by, by the word is easily pushed down by the circumstance of life. Anyone grounded in the world is not easily, cannot, cannot, don't let me even say a relative time, can never be pushed down. It's like a rock. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says it's like my Zion that cannot be moved. Rock footed. The world is able to build. Give attention to the world. Not only to the hearing, but to the performance of it. To doing it in simple faith. You don't need big faith. You need just trust in God. You just need to believe that's what the Lord say, and that is what I'm doing. It's just to take him at his word. Just be simple. It's when men and women start to look for what you call revelation. And they miss the track of followership. Take war, take God's war as it is. Number two, I mentioned earlier, is prayer. In Colossians 4 2, it says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. This is a thanksgiving this morning. Where you are built by the war, then you need to continue in prayer. Colossians 4 verse 2. Continue. Are you getting right? Somebody say, I have prayed. I had a fellow say that, ah, I will come. I'll come to church. The one I pray, <laughs> let me see if God will do it first. Say, when God had done the one he has prayed, then she'll be in church again. <laughs> Is what you hearing that? But here, the Bible admonishes us that we should do what? Continue in prayer. Continuity. Continue in prayer. Not I have prayed enough. Continue and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 
That's a product, a conviction of faith. Lord, I have prayed. I have not seen it, but I know it is there. After all, faith is an evidence of things not yet seen, but the substance of things that you hope for. Praise God. So, don't say I have prayed. I have prayed now. I have not. No. Pray with thanksgiving. I'm watching there or two. What is the quality of a prayer that can give an answer? It's called prevailing prayer. Such a prayer must be effectual. That prayer must be efficient. That prayer must be continuous. Continual. Must be always. Amplify, say. Uh, say, conf- uh, in, in James 5 16, confess your, your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, a villain, must has significant effects. Fourteen or five are loaded there. Why some prayers are not answered? Because we we gloss over our sins. Yes. They all say confess your sins to one another. Acknowledge your wrong. Whether to one another or to us God. If it's to God, acknowledge to God. Lord, I'm sorry. Don't undermine God. It's not a theoretical God. God is a God of principle. God is God that has a standard. Although he has reserved judgment to the day of judgment. But he has a principle that he works with. Confess your sin. You wrong someone, tell him or her sorry. Don't carry an emotion and don't think that uh, nothing has happened and you are just going on even with the wrongs. If that continues in a family, it has the ability to break family, has the ability to break friendship, has the ability to bring comradeship. There's nothing like offense. Nothing as strong that destroys life like offense. And when you cannot come clean in simplicity and humility and say, oh, I'm very sorry, I did it wrong, let it be over. And you feel that you can call the name of the Lord to cancel the offense you, you have done against someone. God does not do that. God wants you to settle that one. As a matter of fact, he said, is any one of you coming to give an offering? I remember that has an issue with his brother. Hold your offering yet. Go home and say to him, and when you have done it, come and give your offering. And then your prayer will be heard. It is just like that. You don't use spirituality to gross over things. The Bible says that's what makes prayer effectual. And if there's any church that that one of it, you see the spirit of love and unity in that church, and there'll be prosperity in that church. Praise God. Where there's no animosity, where there's no one who kept in, is the same applic- is the applicable, uh, applicable to families, to institutions, where everyone work with free mind, with open mind, you see a prosperity. A family that struggles so much, check them. The, 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 the degree of animosity could be very, very high. And there's nothing that retards a family blessing than animosity. So that thing that he that things. So when you pray it on the same page, and number two, say if your prayer like that, then the sick could be healed. Then he say, pray for one another. Praise the Lord. Do you pray for one another. If your prayer is for yourself, myself, my wife, my children, me, me, my going out, my coming in, give me bread, give me tea, give me and the amen. And then Father Tassi, help us for them. Then you will be operating with a cycle, within a circle. A command that pray for one another. And you cannot pray for someone if you are not loving. And that prayer must be effectual, must be passionate, must be genuine, must be from a true heart of love. That prayer must be of someone who is conscious of God. You see, the, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, not a sinful man. Praise the Lord. And he that take delight in wrongs, not he that take delight in sin. Praise the Lord. Not him that take delight. Someone that is conscious. Oh, with this, God will will uh, God, God, God will deal with, with me. I had an uh, experience with, with someone 
a while ago or some time ago, and when we were talk, talking, I said, look, you cannot hedge me against God. Praise the Lord. I know my lane. You cannot hedge me against God. Because I know this. If I dare do what I'm pushed to do, I'm a goner. I was conscious of God. Even my friendship with you, all my friends, I'm conscious of what God will do if I do certain things. I will not. Not, you may, you know, people, people may say, ah, how do I show that, that I'm a man? Are you, are you a more man than God? He will finish you, he will degrade you, he will bury you, he will sink you, and nothing will happen. Praise God. So you must be conscious of God. Effectual father prayer of a righteous man. Let right thing, right thinking, right action be your underlying factor. Let your conscience agree that what I'm doing is right in the trumpet sound. In the midst of my action, I will go to heaven. Once you have that attitude, I guarantee you, before you ask, we will hear you. Praise God. And this is what builds you up. What builds you up? And when you are built up, you are built for responsibility. You are built for abundance. Let the wind come. Let trouble come. You will survive it. I say this of recent, and the Lord put it on my heart consistently and I'm, I'm, I keep saying it. Look, we are just at the introductory paragraph of suffering upon the wall. And Nigeria is not exempted. We are buying for a 600 and something now, isn't it? It will soon be 8,000. Praise God. And many people will be losing jobs. But the Bible says, in the midst of it, when men say there's a casting down, to you what you say, there's a lifting up. Let adversity. You say, people, he talk about two houses. One that's built up properly and the one that was not properly built, built up. The same challenges came in the same measure. One collapsed flatly and the other stood to mock the challenge. You say, any man who hear this word of mine, is it? And do it. Can you see this word that built? That built. Anyone who hear this saying of mine and do it is like a man who has built his house upon a rock. Then the storm came. The wind followed. The torrent of rain and flood came. And the house was just Starting smiling, mocking. You can look. Do you know the stuff I'm made of? When the flood was tired, when the storm was tired, the past, Jesus said, the house stood. No matter the challenge that's coming upon the world, you will stand to testify. You will stand to testify. No matter business that are failing, you stand to testify of your own. No matter what is carrying the world, in the name of Jesus, you, test, you stand to testify your own. But he say, the one who hears the word and do not do, is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The same tempest, the same storm, the same wind, the same rain, the same flood, he say he carried and great was the fall. Do you know what it means to be, to be a great fall? A fall that you cannot go state. That's why many people will be living in city. There will not be, look, there will not be space in this city for many people. But Mali Kassin terrible. I pray for you today. You will not pack out of this city as a result of lack of war. You will not pack out of this city because say, there's no more opportunity. You lift up your voice this morning and appreciate God. Lord, thank you because you have made me a significant person. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of me, I will be the source of help. I'm not the one running away because of the suffering that is coming. I have what is take. I built myself from the day. You have a plan for me. You have made me a significant person. And I pray today, oh Lord, as a significant, you will not put me under the bridge. 
You will not put me under the tire. You will not put me in the place of darkness because you have redeemed me by the blood of your, of your, of your son, Jesus Christ. I'm redeemed by his precious blood. I'm redeemed by his precious blood. The price you paid on me is so valuable. I accept the grace of redemption. Oh God, you did not redeem me to cover me. Anything attempting to cover me in the name of Jesus, I command it to melt away now. My glory will shine forth. My glory will shine forth. I will shine. I'm the light of the world. I'm the help you have sent to the world. I'm the accommodation you have sent to the world. I'm the source of help you have sent to the world. I will not lack help. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let me say something. There are some prayers you will stop praying. You wake up every day, God, send me help today. Send me help. Help. And your mind say, help. Something that will let somebody meet me to give me transport. Let somebody give me food. It's a wrong prayer. God make me a source of help. Many empower me to be your help. Make me that what your word has said I should be. He said, nobody put light on a candle. He values the candle and put it under a cover. God said, I want to show you forth to the world. I pray for you today. The time of your manifestation is now. The time of your manifestation has come. The time of your manifestation has come. Say the manifestation of the sons of God. It's time to manifest his glory, to manifest his abundance, to manifest his victory in the name of Jesus. It's a time that God shows you forth in glory. It's your mentality. In your mentality. And that's the type of prayer I pray. I can't remember when I say God. Oh. I can't remember when, when I, I pray for food. Even when there was none in the house. The one who called me will give me. I'll go about my business. Get it right. I'm not saying because they are there. Many things that God have done for me of us in life are things that are not there. But we just ignore and walk it. And at every point of need, he drops it. Are you getting that? That is how to work. From today, walk in that realm of supernatural blessing. You will not be stranded. Before you think of it, it will come. Whatever you desire to do in the name of Jesus, the economy will not limit you. No, no fear will be limited by the economy. No, you will not be limited by the economy. You will not be limited by the economy. You plan to build, you build. You plan to buy a car, you buy. You plan to marry, you marry. You plan to go to school, you go to school. You plan to invest, you invest. Economy will not limit you. Economy will not limit you. Economy will not limit you. In the name of Jesus, say to the person beside you, do you know I'm a significant person? I am a significant person. Do you know I'm a significant person? So start to start respecting me. Start respecting me. In Jesus' precious name. Put your hands together for the Lord. And celebrate him. And celebrate him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your word is what I have shared. You say, out of you flow rivers for the living water. On that day you stood. On the last day like this, maybe it's an end of more service. I may not know. And you stood openly. Say, is there anyone that is thirsty? Let him come and drink. Out of me shall flow rivers of living water. And when you are finished saying that, you turn to the disciple and say to those of you who also believe in me, out of you also shall flow rivers. In the name of Jesus, we believe in you. And I pray everyone here, make them a source of blessing to that generation. We accept the status you are given to us by your grace that we are the light of the world. You will not redeem us to put us under. That we are a city. We are supposed to be large. In the name of Jesus, I pray today, let everyone here experience significant increase in life. 
that will make him seen and known as a significant person. In Jesus' precious name. The Lord bless you and the Lord do you good. In Jesus' name.